Okay, uh, welcome everyone to uh, our presentation on variable frequency drives. Um, we're going to talk about why we have them in your hoist, um, how they work, uh, a little bit of uh, troubleshooting. The uh, majority of the information today is pertaining to uh, the electromotive um, variable frequency drives that we use in the, uh, the CM hoist. Um, you can use them for uh, the hoist function. Uh, many cranes have them for transverse functions uh, on the bridge as well as on the trolley. Um, but we're going to cover uh, primarily uh, our hoist function and how we use them uh, in our Lodestar hoist. Chris, can I just um, jump in really quick? Sure. I apologize. I just want to make two quick comments. For everybody that just joined now, we are recording the session. The recording link will be added to our YouTube channel. And everyone is in listen-only mode. So we want to encourage you to ask questions in the Q&A pane on the right side of your page. We'll take five minutes at the end to answer them. And any that don't get answered by Chris on today's call, we will, um, he will personally respond to. And one other point, I want to give a quick shout out to Ernie and the rest of his 12 colleagues at Equipment World in Canada who are joining us today. Okay, Chris, back to you. Sure. So the first topic is, uh, is how they work. Um, we'll talk about the basic programming and trouble, uh, troubleshooting features and uh, just an overview of the different types of drives um, that are out there, uh, a couple different companies that uh, manufacture variable frequency drives. All right. Um, so how they work. Uh, we have a variable frequency drive and uh, we have our three phase power coming into a uh, hoist or a crane. Um, majority of all applications uh, you need to have uh, three phases of power. So. Coming into our hoist, uh, they are not dual voltage, so if you have uh, at your power facility, the facility you have um, 230 volts or you have 460 volts, you have to make sure that that hoist is properly sized up for that power supply. All right, so what we do is uh, we hook up our hoist, and if you've got a 230 volt hoist, um, what the drive does, uh, initially what it does, it takes that uh, AC sine wave voltage and it brings it into the drive and creates uh, DC voltage. All right. It does this by using um, a course of diodes, which rectifies the voltage to make DC voltage. All right. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of complicated circuitry, but I'm kind of going to break it down into um, basic principles. All right. Uh, what it uses is what is called uh, pulse width modulation. All right. So um, we have DC voltage. Uh, you'll see right there, 230 volts on the DC bus. Uh, if you have a 230 volt application, the DC bus will show approximately uh, 340 volts. All right, and uh, a 460 volt application, uh, the DC bus will show approximately 600, uh, 680 volts. All right, so what we have is this DC voltage, and it comes into the hoist. And when the operator um, operates the hoist, it goes through a series of circuitry, uh, and a couple of the uh, the primary um, pieces inside this uh, uh, variable frequency drives that uh, creates this pulse width modulation uh, and allows it to create a sine wave uh, is a transistor. All right? uh, transistors are, there's millions of them in your everyday computer. Um, but here we're showing a transistor. A transistor uh, is very small, it's comprised of what is called a, a collector, a base, and an emitter. All right? Um, you'll see we need to have two voltages, all right? So on the left, you'll see that there is uh, the base. The base is a constant. The collector um, feeds, collects the voltage, and then those two are uh, combined, and it sends that to the motor, all right? So you have to kind of think of it just as line one, line two, and line three of a three-phase power going to your hoist, all right? So we got the DC bus voltage there at the top. Um, once, once the operator hits uh, up or down, it's going to simulate a sine wave. All right. So what we have is that pulse wave modulate pulse width modulation. All right. If you look at the chart on the right hand side there, um, the base we talked about is constant voltage. The collector, uh, the voltage will vary going to the collector to create this sine wave. So uh, we create this sine wave, it'll either speed it up or it'll slow it down. So basically it takes that motor and it can speed it up or slow it down. The pulse width is modulated or changed according to the input voltage. All right, so um, that's what uh, variable frequency, uh, it varies the frequency 
going to the hoist. All right, it'll either speed it up or it could slow it down. Uh, RCM hoist, uh, we utilize uh, NEMA D motors. Uh, the NEMA D motors is a high slip motor. All right, so it will slip up to 10%. Uh, the speed ratio for the CM hoist is approximately six to one. All right, so what that means is a lot of people will ask the question, uh, you know, well, it's a variable frequency drive. I could have unlimited speed op, um, application. Um, no, the question is, uh, you know, the answer is, uh, our hoist will, uh, uh, typical hoist is uh, 16 foot per minute, okay? Um, at fast speed, I can achieve 16 feet per minute. Uh, at my slowest speed ratio, if I take that 16 feet, I divide by six, all right, my slowest speed on a 16 foot hoist is approximately 2.67 feet per minute, which is pretty slow, all right? If I had a 64 foot per minute hoist and I put a variable frequency drive on there, if I divide 64 by six, the slow speed would be 10.67. All right, feet per minute. And anywhere in between the 2.67 feet per minute and 16 foot per minute, or the 10.67 uh, feet per minute and the 64 foot per minute, I can have pretty much any one of those speed ranges. All right, so uh, there is a minimum and there is a maximum speed that you can uh, achieve with a variable frequency drive. Hey, Chris, could I go ahead and throw out a polling question for everyone right now? Sure. Excellent. Okay. The question is, I'm going to go ahead and launch this, are variable frequency drives sensitive? And what he's asking is if, if the three-phase power leads coming to the hoist are changed, will it change the rotation of the motor? Yes or no? So are variable frequency drives phase sensitive? If the Three-phase power leads coming to the hoist are changed. Will it change the rotation of the motor? And if you're on an iPad, unfortunately, you won't be able to vote, but you can post your question in the Q&A pane if you like. All right, Chris, it looks like we're at about, let's see, another second or two. Looks like close to 66%. So two-thirds think yes, one-third thinks no. What's the answer? Uh, the answer is actually no. Um, if, you, if you saw how the power came in, it came to a DC bus, and then the power is then fed to the motor. Um, believe it or not, is uh, when the drive is set up at the factory, um, it knows that forward, uh, the motor will turn either to the right, uh, and then reverse, it will turn it to the left. So really, uh, when you hook up a hoist with a variable frequency drive, um, you don't need to swap leads. Like uh, if you hit up, the hoist will go up. All right. Uh, if you hit down, the hoist will go down to independent um, if it's, it, it will not be phase reverse. So it, uh, it's pretty much, a, it's kind of like a smart computer for a hoist. Hmm. Um, so it will not depend uh, on the, the phases. Great. Thanks, Chris. Right. Um, so the next thing is, uh, that pretty much uh, sums up how the how a variable frequency drive works uh, pretty quickly. Uh, there's some intense circuitry inside there. Uh, like I said, it is like a computer for uh, uh, for electrical equipment inside your hoist. It does does quite a bit of the operations, uh, and also does uh, a lot of the uh, uh, kind of you know for um, uh, power that going to the hoist. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like a mini computer. All right. So we're going to talk about basic programming and trouble, troubleshooting features. All right. Um, for a hoist application, uh, we've got uh, one step control. We have two-step control, three-step control, and then what typically uh, when you set up a hoist is for two-step infinitely variable or three-step infinitely variable. Um, when it comes down to one-step, two-step, and three-step, it's pretty much just like having um, contactors in a hoist. So if you had a, you know, a, a three-speed hoist, it's just like having contactors in there. Um, it doesn't defeat the purpose of a variable frequency drive, but if the operator wants to have that type of control, then they can have that type of control. All right, so one-step control in this method, the hoist can be operated as a normal speed, uh, single speed hoist. All right, uh, when you depress the up or the down button, the hoist gradually increases to the rated speed of the hoist. 
Um, this below is specifically for our CM um, hoist that we use the uh, electromotive variable frequency drive in. All right. Um, when you go to the parameters uh, for programming, uh, we have to set our parameters, the N0 parameter uh, 19 to the acceleration time. Unfortunately, in hoist control, the deceleration time, so as soon as you let go of the button, we don't want the load to go up or down any further. So the deceleration time, no matter if you put one second, two seconds, three seconds in there, it stops immediately. All right? um, and then we have uh, our first speed. So in this, we're showing that the acceleration time is five seconds, and um, we want the first speed to be 60 hertz, meaning that it will go up to approximately, if this is a 16 foot per minute hoist, it would go 16 feet per minute. Um, to set this parameter for control one step, single step, we have to set N0 to 52 to 102 and N0 53 to 103. This lets the um, variable frequency drive that knows that it's in one step control. All right. For two step, all right, uh, we change the uh, N052 and the N053 to 102 and 103. Um, now we have two speeds. All right. So in this method, the hoist can be operated as a normal two-speed hoist. Um, typically, you're going to have two deep presses on the button. So the first point will be your first speed, and the second the second point will be your fast speed. Okay. Um, so we can set it as low as 10 hertz for the first speed, and the second speed can be anywhere from 10 to 60 hertz as we're speeding up that uh, that sine wave. So. Um, that means for a 16 foot per minute hoist, we can get as low as 2.67 feet per minute or anywhere from there to 16 foot per minute um, for the second speed. All right. For three step control, um, we've got the same thing. All right. The N052 goes to 102. The N053 stays at 103. Um, what we're doing is we're setting it up for three steps. So we've got uh, three deep presses on the button. All right, in this method, the hoist is operated as a normal three-speed hoist operation. First point is going to be your first speed. If you want it to set all the way down at uh, 2.67 feet per second, then we can set it there. Um, the second speed, anywhere in between there. If it's a nice, comfortable speed for the operator, then they can set it anywhere from the 2.67 all the way to the 16 foot per minute. And again, the third speed, if the, hoist wa if the uh, operator wants to go even faster, um, we can go anywhere from the second point all the way up to the third point being the 16 foot per minute. All right, so it acts just, uh, you can do the, the one step, two step, or three step control, which is just like a single speed, uh, a two speed, or a three speed hoist, okay? Um, the next is what is called um, two step infinitely variable, okay? Uh, this is a, a critical component of the variable frequency drive, and it really brings out what the frequency drive is intended purposes are for. Okay, um, what we're trying to do here is it's nice and uh, what it does is it takes that motor and it ramps it up nice and slowly. Okay, uh, whether you're in the hoist motion, you're in the trolley, or you're in the bridge motion, uh, it prevents load swings. Okay. Uh, and it saves motors, it saves components, uh, it saves beating up on the electrical components inside the hoist. Okay, uh, and infinitely variable, so it's infinitely variable between our maximum speed and our minimum speed. All right, I can get anywhere in between there. So, if you hit the first button, it's going to uh, gradually speed up to the first speed point. Okay, um, and if you hit the second speed point, all right, it will gradually uh, move up to the second speed point. Okay, so um, if anywhere in between there you find a comfortable speed and you don't want to go any faster, when you have the button pushed all the way down, you can release it back to the first speed point and it will maintain a speed anywhere from the first speed to the second speed. And I really wish, I hope I had um, uh, a graphic or uh, a way to show it here on the, uh, on the computer, but uh, um, the best way to say it is it's, it's a very nice speed control for the hoist. It's nice, smooth operation. It gradually increases. Um, but unfortunately, as soon as you let go of the button, the hoist is going to stop abruptly because it is in the hoist function. All right? And the last is three-step infinitely variable. Okay? So uh, there's just one more speed point here. All right? It will uh, take the hoist 
you have your first speed step, which uh, will be, you know, as you said, as low as a 2.67 feet per minute. It's going to gradually ramp up to that speed. All right, and at our acceleration time, you can see we have is five seconds. So, in my second speed point, if I hit the the button uh, to the second uh, depress, well, it's going to gradually speed up to the second speed point. All right, and if I hit the button into the third depress, well, it'll gradually speed up to uh, our full speed point. All right, so. Um, that's just one of the things, uh, different uh, applications you can set it up for, uh, for speed controls, uh, for one step, two step, three step, or the infinite variable controls, which um, depending on the operator, if uh, some operators, if you put a variable frequency drive on a hoist after having one step, two step, and three step controls, they are not used to the slow ramp ups and the slow ramp downs, okay? Um, but it's very it's very critical. It's it's uh, it's good for load control. It will uh, prevent load swings, and uh, it's just a very good application. Once the operator gets used to that, um, they'll see that they'll they'll like it a lot better. All right, Chris. If I could add something, like, what I like about the three step is, you know, I hit, I'm in that second speed position, and I can kind of before I hit that third detent, I can kind of throttle it and lock it back into the second position, so I can kind of speed it up a little bit and then lock go back to my second detent and lock in the faster speed and also do the reverse. Kind of before I go back into that first detent, right before it clicks into that first detent, kind of decel it and click it back into the second speed and it will lock into that whatever that decel speed I was at. So it's really a full like a, almost like throttling. So something for your operators to get used to, but it's really cool how you can really just dial in any speed you want at that point. So um the next thing we're going to get into is a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, these are common troubleshooting um, applications for any hoist or crane. Uh, a lot of times when people uh, have to troubleshoot a variable frequency drive, um, they go into the parameters and uh, it'll actually log what um, the, uh, the alarms are. Okay? Um, and a lot of times when you, you hook up a hoist for the first time, uh, you may have UV, which is under voltage. Okay, um, just like a normal hoist, if you hooked it up and we had too long of a, a drop and we didn't have enough voltage, well, that's basically what this drive is telling you: is saying, "Hey, I've got too low a voltage. I will not operate." Okay, so under this, the main circuit uh, DC voltage drops below the required voltage. So, uh, on a 230 volt application. We, we showed earlier that that DC bus voltage um, is approximately 340 volts. When it drops below 200 volts, well, you're going to get an alarm. It's going to say, under voltage, I don't have enough voltage. For a 460 volt application, if it drops below 400 volts, all right, normally it's 680 volts, that's when you'll get the under voltage. So um, it could be due to uh, too long of a drop. It could be due to... Um, not enough voltage that's applied to the hoist, all right, any one of those, those reasons, okay? The other one could be over voltage. Uh, typically, uh, unless you really have power problems that coming into a facility, um, you may have a line that uh, for some reason, I've, in older buildings, it could be like 240 volts, 240 volts, then you get an odd line that might be like 270 volts, okay? Um, that will put too much voltage onto the DC bus. Uh, so 230 volts, if that bus sees more than 410 volts, it's going to say, hey, we have voltage problems here. There's too much voltage. Um, the other reason is if you bought a 230 volt hoist and you plugged it into 460, um, it's kind of like a, you know, a safety check that uh, you know, it, it notices that voltage and it, it won't burn up, but it'll tell you that uh, we've got too much voltage here. Okay, and a 460 volt application, if we have more than 820 volts on there, it'll let you know that uh, we have an over voltage. Okay. Uh, another alarm, a common alarm, is OC or over current. Um, this is typically uh, when the operator hits the up or the down button on a hoist. Uh, the variable frequency drive is. Um, taking a sample of the current that is going to the electrical motor in the hoist. Um, when it notices that uh, the electrical current uh, is too high, it 
faults out. We have too much current going to the motor. One, bad for the motor, all right, and two is it, it shouldn't be pulling that high of current. It faults out around 250 percent, okay? So one of the main problems is you could have a bad motor winding. So it's almost letting you know that the motor is going bad and uh, we could have a, a, a bad winding. You could check it with an ohm meter and uh, see if that motor is bad. So premature failure of the motor. The other, which uh, a lot of people, um, a lot of people uh, may mistake it, is the acceleration time. All right, we talked about earlier how you like it to nicely ramp up and then ramp down. Well, an operator who went from that one step, two step, three step control will say, "Hey, this thing is taking way too long to speed up. I need you to to speed up the acceleration time." All right meaning that I need it to ramp up to that speed quickly because I want to get my job done and I want to get it done fast. This slowly moving and slowly slowing down, I can't deal with that. So what happens is a technician will go up there and they'll, they'll take that acceleration time and they'll lower it to like sometimes half a second, uh, one second, two second. Well, when you lower that uh, acceleration time, basically what you're doing is it's called inrush current. Um, you want that motor to go from zero to like 1800 RPM in just a, a quick snap of a finger, all right? And when it realizes that inrush current being too high, uh, boom, next thing you know, the drive faults out because you have too low of an acceleration time, okay? Chris, I have a um, really, Chris, I have a really quick question. Will dynamic brake problems cause um, OV faults? Over voltage faults, yeah. uh, dynamic, hmm. yeah, yes, yes they will. Uh, dynamic braking problems, if the dynamic brake is too small, um, over voltage, what happens is in dynamic braking, um, it has a, a resistor there and it dumps the excessive voltage onto this resistor, all right? And if the resistor is too small, what it does is it feeds that voltage back onto the DC bus. Mm -hmm. When the DC bus hits over the uh, the 410 volts, boom, you're going to have an over voltage. All right? Okay. Okay. Did I answer that question? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yep. And that goes um, for the slowing down of a transverse function or for a bridge function. If you set that... Um, that uh, deceleration time too low because the operator wants it to stop very quickly, um, it will take that voltage, if the resistor is not equipped for that, it will take that excessive voltage, it puts it back onto the DC bus, it realizes there's too much voltage there, and it will fall out. Okay? Okay. Great. Thanks. All right. So where you're going to find uh, that information? Uh, on the side of a hoist or the side of a motor, it will give you the... Uh, uh, they call it the FLA, which is the full load amps. Uh, it's the, the required current for a hoist to operate at its rated voltage. All right, so we've got right here is, uh, is if you see amps right there, it says 4.8 amps. I took this sticker off of a dual voltage hoist, but um, it says 4.8 amps. That is uh, the required current that is allowed to go to the motor at uh, rated voltage. Um, Inrush current typically for a normal hoist is about 150%. Okay, so that's why they set that overcurrent at about 250%. Uh, many things can cause uh, overcurrent other than just a burned out winding. Um, you may have too much load on a hook. You may have um, gears that are not timed. So as the motor is driving through that gear train and it's eating up the gears, well, it takes more energy for the hoist to get going. All right, so it's going to cause uh, an overcurrent draw. So anything that causes the electrical motor in a hoist to work harder is going to cause an excessive current draw. And that's where it's going to fault out at that 250 percent. Okay? Um, also, if there's a phase loss, um, say the, uh, the collector shoes are not making contact or say a wire becomes loose, um, if we have a phase loss coming into the hoist, well it will detect that for us. Um, it'll say PF, which is phase loss, that's input, that's power coming into the hoist. All right? So either line one, line two, or line three coming to the hoist, that's a common uh, mistake. Someone may have just forgot to tighten a terminal and it'll tell you, hey, there's a phase loss. So you, the operator must go, or the technician will go back and make sure that all the connection points are solid. All right? 
Then we also have LF, which is a phase loss output, meaning that um, the power coming into the drive is okay, but the power going out of the drive is not okay, meaning that it's not detecting the motor is drawing current. So there could be um, a loose wire on the output that goes to the motor. There could be a bad motor winding because the motor winding is burned out, all right, because it's not sensing any current going to that winding, all right. So, um, like I said, the, there is a lot of circuitry, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, inside this, inside these uh, variable frequency drives that allow it to um, almost like a small computer for the uh, the hoist. Okay. Uh, also, troubleshooting. Um, highly, 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 highly. Never, never weld uh, or use a grounding instrument uh, from a welder uh, to a hoist. Okay. Uh, it will fry those drives inside those hoists um, very, very quickly. All right. So never ever use high current electrical equipment around those uh, variable frequency drives because they're little mini computers. All right. You you induce a high voltage to those little variable frequency drives, it will fry them. Okay. So those are just a couple of uh, uh, troubleshooting tips uh, to watch out for, to look for when operating the hoist. So a little bit of uh, basic programming and troubleshooting. Great. All right. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, types of frequency drives and their applications. Okay. So uh, Columbus McKinnon at CM, we utilize uh, the impulse, uh, um, the Electromotive Impulse G Plus Mini. All right. It's very, it's 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 equipped for the application. It's uh, for small light duty hoists and transverse motions. Okay. Uh, when they come from CM, if you get a hoist that's factory uh, uh, variable frequency drive from CM. It is programmed at the factory, okay? And we can program it that one step, two step, three step, or the two step infinitely variable, or the three step infinitely variable. Just tell us what tell us what you like it set up for, and we can do all that right at the factory. If you'd like to program it yourself, depending on the operator, you want to see how the motions are working. If you want it faster or slower, absolutely, you can increase or decrease those acceleration times or the speed points by using those basic programming principles we just talked about. All right? uh, it's up to a CMA Class D uh, service class crane, um, Class F being a uh, top running bridge crane being the highest class for 24 hours continuous duty, but Class D um, is for general, general uh, manufacturing um, and our hoists are actually uh, HMI, um, HMI 4 class uh, hoist, so is uh, applicable for um, our application. Speed control is only 6 to 1, so you can get uh, um, the lowest speed is 2.67 feet per minute on a 16 foot per minute hoist. All right. Um, you can never go faster, right? You know, right. I know you said a, million, a bunch of times, yep. but if you're at 16 feet, you're at 16 feet, there's no, you have to really pick your, yep. Yep. So pick you your can, top speed yep. and, or, or your low speed. For our hoist, the, the fastest you can go is the top speed, which if you order a 16 foot per minute hoist, is 16 foot per minute. If you order a 64 foot per minute hoist, the fastest you can go is 64 foot per minute. There is a little asterisk there because uh, there's different drives that can change that in coming up in a second. All right. Um, other uh, drives, Impulse G Plus Series 4, which they just came out with a Series 4 just recently. Um, Used for worm gear drive and mechanical load break hoist. All right, you need to know what kind of hoist you have. This is for larger wire rope hoist. All right, um, if it has a worm gear drive or mechanical load break, this is the one you want. Uh, transverse motions as well. It has a V by F control, which is um, voltage by frequency control. All right, uh, classification of cranes is A through F, so higher duty cranes. Um, must be programmed on site. You can see that uh, if you look at the picture there, it has almost like a little remote that you can stick inside there. All right. Um, so what you can do is you can grab the programs off of another crane. You can download all the information from that other crane for the speed points, speed controls. You download it to that little control right there. You stick it into the other crane, and boom! Next thing you know. The crane is up and running. All the speed controls are set. All the information is set. As long as those cranes are exactly the same, all right. A lot of companies do that because they have three, four, five, six, eight, ten cranes on the same runway, all the same, all right. You notice here the for this larger drive, the speed control is 40 to one. 
um, for VBIF control, and open loop vector is 200 to 1. So you can creep with this variable frequency drive. All right, so cost is involved. Um, higher current uh, rated hoists are uh, for this type of drive here. Um, and that's the, the Impulse G Plus Series 4. The last one that Electromotive um, supplies is the Impulse uh, VG Plus Series 4. A little bit different uh, type of drive. It, the, the utilization of it is unique because you have what is called a closed loop uh, vector. Okay, what that entails is the drive sends voltage out to the motor when the operator operates the hoist or the transverse motions. But what they do is they put an encoder on the back of the motor. The encoder basically makes sure that what the drive is telling the motor to do, the motor is doing it. All right. Um, for clean crane classifications A through F, uh, used on a ton of different applications for hoist controls, uh, for trolley transverse motions, bridge motions. Um, definitely for larger motors, uh, you know, when you start getting into 100 ton, 200 ton cranes, um, you can put bells and whistles on this uh, variable frequency drive. It have, has output, so you can uh, do a. It, what it has is a torque proving. So it'll, no, it'll notice the amount of torque that is applied to the hoist. Um, believe it or not, it actually you can hook it up to a scoreboard and it'll tell you within 5% the load that you're lifting. Pretty cool, actually. And then there's also, uh, you can put anti-collision devices on these so the crane doesn't run into another crane on, um, on the runway. Very cool as well. Uh, it's got a couple more slides. The, uh, the copping hoist utilizes a, a little bit different type of variable frequency drive. Um, CM uses the electromotive. Copping uses um, the power electronics drives. All right, just different programming parameters. Uh, little micro speed CX is the first one. Um, but again, the, like the first one we went over before is for small light duty applications. They come pre-programmed at the factory. You can get advanced programming available. Um, their speed control is a little bit different. 12 to 1 is the ratio. Believe it or not, they're designed for A through F class cranes. Uh, and they're, they're, uh, they're, the claim to fame is um, they're very uh, high temperature. So they'll exceed temperatures up to 140 degrees. All right. Uh, they have the micro speed CX design. Uh, was a different type of uh, variable frequency drive they utilize. It's for AC hoist motors up to 40 horsepower. Must be programmed on site. Uh, again, claim, crane classes A through F, and um, again, their claim to fame is uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit they can work into. All right. And the last one is a multi-vector drive. Uh, this is for AC motors up to 600 horsepower. Uh, must be programmed on site. You can do the uh, the closed loop feedback for this uh, for this uh, variable frequency drive as well. Uh, again, 140 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature. That's, that'll go up to, all right? So, um, um, Chris, I have, a, I have just another quick polling question, if you don't mind. Uh, the next sure. question is, let me just pull it up. Okay, why would someone, why would someone choose to have a variable frequency drive installed into a hoist or crane? Is it A, increase the life expectancy of motors and other electrical components in the hoist? B, decrease power consumption, saving the customer money. C, allows the operator to have better load control. Or D, all of the above. So again, if you just take a quick vote, let us know what you think. A couple more seconds. It looks like there are a handful that are thinking um, allow the operator to have better load control. About 10%, and the other 90% are voting for all of the above. So what is the correct answer, Chris? Yep, the correct answer is all of the above. Um, drives, they save motors, they save all the electrical components. Um, when it talks about inrush current, which is the, uh, the current that is uh, initially applied to an electrical motor, um, these drives, they, they save motors. They, uh, um, they, they ramp them up very slowly. You don't have very high inrush currents. Um, they, uh, they save, because of the inrush current, that saves the facility um, electricity, which is saving power, which is then more money in their pocket. 
And then uh, lastly was um, load control. So um, whether you're in the hoist function, um, if you have uh, quick abrupt stops or you're trying to position an object, all right, you don't have to sit there and hit the up, hit the down button three, four, five, ten times before you get that object where you want it. All right, you can slowly get up to that position and stop. Um, in the transverse functions, uh, when the crane's going down the runway, if you have an, an abrupt start, all right, you're going to have load swings. All right, you kind of just like the picture that we have coming up here. So um, the crane's going down the runway. If you have a one-speed or two-speed uh, control, and the operator, um, you know, hits that first speed uh, or the second speed abruptly, the crane takes off. Well, inertia, that load is still sitting there, um, and the crane's taken off down the runway. Well. As soon as you go to stop, well, the, the, the load's already swinging, and then when the operator goes to stop, it's going to swing even more. All right? If you have a, a crane with a variable frequency drive, and you uh, slowly ramp up or slowly ramp down, well, that load is going to be controlled. You're going to limit swinging, um, and it will uh, you know, prevent those load swings in the transverse motion. All right? Same thing, we just talked about the hoist control. Uh, the operator is uh, trying to position an object either uh, you know up or down or on a table. Um, that smooth, slow operation is going to allow that load to stay firm, and you know you're not going to drop it on a, um, a steel table or you're not going to slam the the object down on the concrete floor. You're not going to damage the product. All right, it'll have nice, smooth, slow operation, um, so you can get that object uh, safely uh, onto wherever you're putting it. Eliminates a lot of wear and tear on that brake, so you're not jogging the load and jogging the brake too. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Are we at the point of questions? Yep. Any more questions? Excellent. Yes, there are a couple questions that have come in. Just so you know, for everybody on the call, we have about another eight minutes to go before we wrap up. So we have a few minutes for questions. The first one is: um, Is the programming unit removable from the CM drive? And will the drive operate without the programming unit installed? The programming unit. Oh, and, you're going. To, and and you're hang going on to... one sec. I also wanted to say that we have um, we have another gentleman, Bob Boltema, on the call, who is our um, new product development engineer, electrical for CM. And I just unmuted you, Bob, in case you also wanted. Actually, I'm going to unmute you now, Bob, in case you want to comment as well. But go ahead, Chris. Um, I think the question, and I'm hoping I'm answering your question properly, um, the, the variable frequency drive that comes in the CM hoist is this uh, Impulse G Plus Mini. Uh, this one is not removable and programmable to another drive. Um, other variable frequency drives that are on larger cranes uh, utilize um, the, the G Plus series, and this one right here is removable, and you can move it from crane, uh, you know, from hoist to hoist to hoist, and be able to download and upload um, all the parameters. Okay. Perfect. And let me just hold on one sec. There was one more question that came up. Uh, just a second. Oh, goodness. Hang on. Ah. All right. The other question that came in just now was, is the control f truly infinitely variable, i.e., any speed between first point and full speed, or is it limited to the speed ratio? In other words, if the drive has a 6 to 1 speed ratio, do I have 6 speeds, or do I have an infinite number of speed? Infinite number of speed. So anywhere that you back off that button, um, between the, the first speed point and the second speed point, it will maintain that speed. Um, so. When I when I talked about it, it has minimum speed, it has minimum speed and maximum speed. But anywhere in there, it's infinitely variable, so you can vary it anywhere, any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, another question came in from Tom. What happens? This probably was going back to what you just talked about. What happens below ten hertz? Um, the drive won't let you, uh, won't allow you to set the speed below ten hertz, um, or if you look at the picture I'm on right now, this is for Electromotive, this is for the G Plus series, you can set that below 10 hertz. Uh, it, 
it will allow you to to set it below 10 hertz. Uh, so 60 hertz divided by is 1.5 hertz. It'll allow you to set that at, and that crane or hoist will literally creep um, to the point where it's like, okay, is this thing going to move or what? And uh, you can set the the slow speed control um, to to very very slowly. Okay, a follow-up question was, if, if you absolutely need the 0 to 10 hertz to be faster, can that be accommodated? Uh, 0 to 10 hertz on the slow speed? Uh, yes, you can uh, set the slow speed to 30 hertz. So the, the operator can set it at 30 hertz, which means ha um, half the speed control. So if you had a 16 foot per minute hoist, you can set your first speed to, to 30 hertz, which would be half the total frequency, which is 8 feet per minute. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, yep. And one other thing I wanted to add is uh, I did make mention, because you can only have speed control up to what your hoist is capable of. Um, in the VG Plus Series 4, uh, which has control, uh, it's a closed loop motor feedback, and I talked about torque proving, so it, it'll recognize if there is a load on the hook. Believe it or not, it's actually it's it's insane what these things can do. But if it does not recognize a load on the hook, it will actually allow the operator to overspeed the motor by I think 50%. So you can yes overspeed the motor than what it's capable of, but it's only if there's no load on the hook. Okay, I think we have time for one more question that just came in. Um, and then we will conclude. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right. Now, I think we're going to continue. Can you go ahead and review just some of the upcoming training we have, Chris, before we wrap up? Yeah. Yep. So um, some of the upcoming classes that we have is our Qualified Rigor Workshop on March uh, 17th through the 19th. That's here at our uh, Niagara Training Center, uh, which, by the way, Niagara Falls, the U.S. side, has officially frozen over as of yesterday or the day before. <laughs> Um, the overhead, so if you're going to come here in March, hopefully it's uh, thawed out by then. Um, overhead crane hoist inspection, that's April 21st to the 23rd, as well as the 28th through the 30th. Not, those are not here at our Tonawanda uh, Niagara Training Center. Um, May 4th through the 8th, which is at our Tonawanda Training Center, um, Niagara Training Center, at, uh, which is the chain and wire rope hoist repair certification. Then we also have our chain and hoist repair certification. Uh, March 24th through the 26th, and April 21 through the 23rd. Perfect. Perfect. I have one more polling question for everybody, just to get a little feedback. Um, this is regarding our training. So the question is, would you be interested in attending, just a second, are you interested in becoming a certified CMCO chain hoist repair technician or taking any inspection or rigging training? Just let, let us know, you know, yes, within one to three months, yes, within three to six months, yes, within six to 12 months, or no, not at this time. We just really like to get your feedback. This is just a, a quick question. And, um, and while that's being answered, or why that's, while you are answering that polling question, we do have one more question we wanted to ask quick, if I can pull it up. And that is um, the following. What, applica what applications are not good fits for a VFD drive? High heat, immediate speed response, et cetera. Is that one? That one's for me. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, variable frequency drives. If you're going to put it in a high heat application, uh, a lot of times they'll put them on uh, hot metal cranes. Um, it's well, it's not good for the drive, but a lot of times when it comes into uh, you know huge big applications, high heat, um, they will put air conditioned cabinets inside these. With that said is, when you got air conditioned cabinets, hopefully the um, temperature stays a constant, but if not, what happens when you have electronics and you have condensation? Um, you're going to uh, get water inside there and you could have uh, premature failure. So, um, but that's just the way, that's just the way uh, you have to deal with it. So high heat, um, there's a company here that uh, they only test during high heat. Uh, they have a, a machine that uh, gets powered up and the, the heat inside there is ridiculously hot. Um, they don't operate the crane at that temperature, but uh, it is in that application. So um, they did move towards and in, in, in install actually air conditioned uh, cabinets for those, uh, those variable frequency drives. Um, so yeah, it, it, you're, you're, playing, you're playing with, uh, hey, is it going to work? Do I want this application? 
If not, then I, if I do, I got to have air conditioned cabinets. All Excellent. Right. Okay, we're going to go to the, if you could just flip to the last slide, I just want to direct everybody to some social media sites that we have. So um, we have one minute left. I just wanted to let you know you can connect with us in many different ways after this meeting. You can connect with us. We have two Twitter channels, um, CMCO Live and CM Entertainment for our entertainment uh, group. We are on YouTube. That's where we're going to be posting this recording after the session. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, and we also have a blog you can subscribe to. And all those icons are on our main website, cmworks.com. So we appreciate all of you. I know there's one question that came in from Tom. Tom, I'll have Chris respond to you personally after the call. Um, but we want to thank everyone for attending. We like to honor your time and not exceed what we started with, which was the 45 minutes. We hope you all have a great uh, day. And after you get the um, email from me with the link, if you have any comments or feedback or idea for questions, we'd love to hear it. So thanks again for everybody for your participation. And um, we hope to see you on next month's webinar. Bye-bye.